This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you an exclusive interview with Dr. Priya Abraham, Director of the National Institute of Virology on COVID-19 variants and prevention. Interviewer is EIR correspondent Diksha Saxena. To begin with, my first question to you is, since the beginning of the pandemic, the NIV has put up a relentless fight against the virus. According to you, how far have we come in the fight and how much success have we achieved in it? And how far do we have to go now? I'll take your question and reply it in a two-stage manner. One with regard to ICMR and IV. As you know, we were the first to detect the initial cases in India. We set up diagnostics. We were very lucky to be able to isolate the virus, which gave us an opportunity to set up indigenous antibody detection tests, including the neutralization antibody test, which is really important to analyze both preclinical trials as well as during clinical trials in the making of a vaccine. So, among many other things, I think perhaps virus isolation was one of our biggest achievements. And we have done a lot of testing, we have distributed a lot of RT-PCRs to the rest of the country and also we have empowered over 106 laboratories. These are government laboratories which are a network of virus reference diagnostic laboratories under the Department of Health Research and in turn they have also been helping other government labs. We have about 1,200 labs that are using the RT-PCR technology that we have started. As I had already mentioned about the vaccine, yes, we were very instrumental in helping a pharma make India's first indigenous vaccine for SARS-CoV-2. Having said that, on a national scale, we see India has been quick to develop diagnostics. Not only that, we have worked hard towards innovation and self-reliance. So we have a number of made in India diagnostic platforms in the nation. We have also been quick to become self-sufficient with personal protective equipment, PPE. And then in India itself, there are two vaccines being made. Of course, in a country like ours with our population, vaccination targets are not as desirable as they should be. But by the end of the year, we are going to see some very good coverage of vaccination all over the country. As we have started the conversation, so with your answer now, I have two aspects in mind. The first, NIV helped in detecting the RT-PCR. So my question to you is just for the benefit of the listeners, and it is out of inquisitiveness, the new variant which was found, the Delta variant, people say that it was untraceable in the RT-PCR test. Can you just solve this mystery? How does that happen? That absolutely is not true. With the PCR assay, which has been, you know, distributed from NIV, it detects three separate regions of the virus's genome. So, till now, whatever the variant, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, whatever, none of these variants have escaped detection by the RT-PCR. Where we have found negative RT-PCR is where labs have been inundated with work, maybe led to delays, staff are not there, maybe the reagents being used, and not only the NIV RT-PCRs being used, but there are other RT-PCRs being used all over the country, and maybe the reagents in transport had become, you know, less effective, and that's why we had false negativity. That means we were getting a negative result when actually we should get a positive result. But this is not due to the assays being used in the country. It's more because of logistic reasons. But the RT-PCRs used in the country can pick up every variant that far. Bharat Biotech, ICMR and NIV jointly developed the indigenous vaccine, the co-vaccine vaccine in India. So just for the benefit of our listeners, can you just explain how does the vaccine work? So this vaccine formulation is inactivated virus. This virus has actually been inactivated by a chemical known as beta propionolactone. And it's also mixed with an adjuvant, which is also called as al-hydroxy gel. 
how it works is once the vaccine is injected in the upper arm, the killed or inactivated virus is taken up by a group of immune cells known as antigen presenting cells. These antigen presenting cells engulf the virus particles in the vaccine formulation and then fragment the virus into smaller fragments of protein. And these are presented on the surface of the antigen presenting cell, which are recognized by another group of very important immune cells known as the T helper cell or the T helper lymphocyte. Once they get activated, they recognizing these foreign protein fragments sticking out on the surface of the antigen presenting cell. They send out signals to other immune cells that also get activated. And one group of activated immune cells are the B lymphocytes. The B lymphocytes are those that are responsible in producing the antibody response, while other immune cells are involved with the cell-mediated immune response. Ma'am, my next question to you is because uh, this is a very new virus and all of us scientists like you are also facing this uh, calamity for the first time. So, the virus is mutating and uh, that is what we saw in India in the second wave, the Delta variant. And now we are hearing from past two, three days, like Dr. Paul said that the Delta plus variant has been first reported in March and now it has been brought to public notice on 13 June. So, like there are several mutations, Beta, Delta, and many more might be there. So, is the vaccine efficient against those variants too? So, these variants develop mutations on their spike gene as well as other regions of its genome. What is important is when these mutations happen in the spike gene, the amount of neutralization that the antibody that is there in individuals who are vaccinated, this antibody cannot effectively neutralize these variants as well as the original strain. But the very process of vaccination produces sufficient amounts of antibody that even if the neutralization is reduced twofold, threefold or five or sixfold, the antibodies can still neutralize the virus. Thus far, whatever variants we have got, the antibodies are still able to neutralize the virus, though somewhat limitedly with some of these variants. We must also remember that when we deliver vaccine, the vaccine, as I had mentioned earlier, stimulates the production of antibodies, but also stimulates the cell-mediated immunity. So, it is not just the binding of antibody that contributes to protection. But having said all of this, both in India and the world over, what scientists are engaged in now is to continuously do what is known as genomic surveillance because you want to look out for any new variant which is a nasty variant that is not getting neutralized at all. Thus far, we have not encountered one like that, but the world over, scientists are engaging in genomic surveillance because we do expect more variants to come along. Ma'am, last year in the first wave we were talking that we'll have uh, herd immunity and now it's been more than a year. As you say that they are looking after new variants. So, is it possible to have herd immunity against the new variants as well? Yes, as I just now said, it's not like there's no immunity to even any of the variants that we have got thus far. And herd immunity is boosted up in two ways. The amount of immunity in a population that will prevent the further easy spread of the virus. And that can be got by two ways. Through natural infection, you produce an immune response. But the more effective way of boosting herd immunity is to vaccinate, vaccinate and vaccinate. So as more and more of any country's population and the world at large gets vaccinated, this will impede or halt the spread of the virus and mutants and variants appear as the virus keeps spreading. You give the virus a chance to keep spreading, you know, rage through a, a population, it will make variants. So, we need to block it, yes, as you said, with herd immunity and this herd immunity with vaccination increasing in any population would be able to impede the spread or the risk 
posed by even Benin. Ma'am, my next question is: We have heard of several symptoms after the COVID vaccination. Can you clear the air that people are under the impression that once they get vaccinated, they won't be infected by the COVID? Symptoms after vaccination are related to actually delivery of the vaccine, and those are known as AEFI. Or basically, these are the allergic reaction to the vaccine. These symptoms can vary from low grade fever, muscle ache, people having a generalized weakness, tiredness. This is actually related to the immune response that is triggered after you are encountered the virus that is there in the vaccine formulation. That is not a COVID illness per se. That is the body's immune response. to the vaccine formulation that is injected into your arm that is the illness people feel after vaccination now i want to clearly talk about this versus actually having covid after vaccination there are people 7 days after taking the vaccine they go down with covid that's not because of the vaccine it's because they would have been exposed to the virus just before or just after taking the vaccine and you must remember that when we take a vaccine it takes a couple of weeks for that immune response to mature my next question is now people are speculating and in fact several doctors have said that in the third wave children will get affected most likely because children have not been vaccinated yet so do you feel that something like this might happen and if it is a possibility what is our preparation to fight that subsequent to this A statement being made in media a number of the nations top pediatricians have met and they are of the belief that children in particular are not going to be at risk especially younger children children below 10 years of age it's not that children were not exposed in the first and second wave they were very much exposed but children generally especially younger children have a mild or asymptomatic illness and this is believed to be because they have a lower number of as2 receptors expressed in their respiratory tract and their immune response handles the virus differently as compared to young adults and older adults but having said all of this though i am saying that pediatric infections may not be a problem we after one and a half years of this pandemic in all humility realize we do not know everything about this virus so it may be prudent to nevertheless gear up as a nation for probable spurt in infections in pediatric age group and therefore we must build the infrastructure for having pediatric cases probably getting admitted in terms of oxygen availability the appropriate equipment train manpower even drugs and injectables that are appropriate for them it may be a good idea to gear up do i personally think pediatric infections should not be an extraordinarily huge problem except in those children that already have comorbidity ma'am any message which you would like to pass on to our listeners i have one message which is for now while many of us are aware of the importance of vaccination we have got vaccinated and we are also aware that we need to be constantly using masks and you know following covid appropriate behavior we should take it up on ourselves to tell at least two people to take the vaccination both doses of vaccination then only you could call them completely vaccinated and also continue mask wearing and wearing the mask properly even if you do not double mask the mask should cover the nose and the mouth completely so we need to wear our mask properly and we need to spread this message to especially those who are less informed with this we bring our discussion to an end thank you so much dr ibrahim for your time thank you you are listening to an exclusive interview with dr priya ibrahim director of the national institute of virology on covid-19 variants and prevention interviewer was air correspondent diksha saxena This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app News on AIR. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsdtalks at 
gmail.com